Hey guys, welcome back. Just a quick, a little quick update. I've been, if you guys, uh, and the, if you guys can tell from the past, <laughs> if you guys can tell, couldn't tell, mm, ah! put some on your skin. I'm just gonna, oh, the F man. Wow. Just this really quick. I just, uh, shark pants. Always wearing my shark pants. Mini, mini. Ah! Hey guys, welcome back. Life has been really amazing, but very busy lately. So I thought I'd make a recent favorites to kind of catch you guys up on what I've been doing with my life, the things that I've been loving, the things that I've been watching, and some products that I've been loving. And just, I got this cup a while ago, but I thought it's very appropriate for the timing of this video. This came out just like two days ago, Stranger Things 2, so. Oh! Just spilled all over myself. Classy as always. So yeah, there's a uh, four skincare products. There's this box that you guys will see what's inside later. Um, I'll just, I'll unbox this. I haven't even really opened it. It's pretty cool, I guess. And yeah, I wanna just catch this up on my life and what's been going on. So I, it's been pretty wild these past few months. Um, at least this past month, if like wild, like that wild to the point where I just haven't taken care of that pile of clothes at all. And I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I've been loving because uh, um, I obviously haven't done this in a while. So yeah, I want to share with you guys a show that I've been loving. Jewel in the Palace is a Korean drama. A movie that I watched recently that was amazing. It's also a Korean movie called Train to Busan. A couple skincare products. This thing that's in a box. Usually my favorites have books and podcasts and more self-helpy related things. Sometimes for months at a time, I'll just like, I can't stop myself from wanting to read books in general and like self-improvement, self-betterment, whatever self-help type books and I'll just keep reading, keep reading, keep reading and there comes a point where I'm just kind of like I think I'm okay like I think I got to a place I'm like I'm at a place in my life where things are okay, things are good I feel okay, I'm at peace, I'm accepting reality I don't need any self-help stimulation so that's kind of where I have been now that I'm at a more consistent place I've been doing a lot of washing of the shows and specifically Korean drama shows Korean shows because I don't know I just I think growing up I was more like I just gravitated more towards Western things. Like I loved eating pasta. I love pizza more than I love rice. And it's just, it wasn't something that I like consciously chose. It just was kind of what happened or like what, what, what I just like naturally gravitated towards, right? And so growing up in America and I guess like in Taiwan, I think because I did experience Chinese culture to some extent, when I moved to America in middle school, no, in elementary school, I just, I wanted, I don't know, I just like, like any American, Chinese, American, Taiwanese kid, I just like wanted to fit in and never really thought uh, too much about my roots. And so, guys, this is all going somewhere. This is gonna segue into the first show that I'm gonna talk about, so <laughs> hang in there. So, I think now that I'm older, now that I'm, more aware of who I am and my roots and my heritage and my my own culture, I guess. I'm more curious about my heritage. I'm more curious about the Eastern world, like Chinese medicine and traditional Chinese culture. And I don't know. And I think because a lot of, actually I think everything that is Korea was influenced by China back in the days, I just naturally also gravitate towards Korean culture and just like Korean things and also just Korean culture is a lot more conservative and I'm gonna sound like a total grandma for saying this but I really appreciate that um, <clears throat> in terms of respecting parents, respecting elders, respecting each other 
um, having like just moral principles to of doing things and I know modern day society isn't as traditional as it was before but just like the things that have been passed down and the things that are still the cultures that are still being implemented in this day and age it's just to me it's like oh that's really cool um don't know if what I want to say the point got across but yeah, like I appreciate how the shows are less about violence and sex and drugs and it's more about like spiritual things or gods and deities and ancient like Korean dynasties and stuff. So let's uh, get to the first show, shall we? All right, so the first show that I want to talk about is Jewel in the Palace, Da Changjing, and in Korean it's De Jungkum, 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 and it is set in the Joseon Dynasty, which is around the same time as the Ming Dynasty and the High Renaissance in Europe. So if you guys need some more context, it's when Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa, when Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, and when he carved David, the marble statue that's not like this that's a thing for like the it's like the best sculpture that's ever been sculpted in all of humanity and uh, it tells the story of an orphan girl whose parents were killed wrongfully and she goes through so much shit to become the first female physician for the king and this is based on a true story the reason why I love this show and I'm only halfway through, there's like 54 episodes that are an hour long, which is considered pretty lengthy for Korean dramas to begin with. Oh, and it was like, it came out years ago, like 2003. The story portrays like this like courageous determination of curiosity, the power of perseverance, of having virtues, of upholding high moral principles for yourself and for your actions. And it's a lot about like good, good versus evil, <laughs> good versus evil. And there's just, there's so much that even though I haven't been reading and listening to as many podcasts as I would like, the shows that I pick and the movies that I pick, they're all still things to... Like, I'm still very selective and very intentional about what I choose to watch and what I choose to consume. So, like I said earlier about, like, me wanting to learn more about my own culture, I really appreciate the traditional culture aspect of it, the royal court cuisine aspect of seeing what kind of food they prepare for the king and how extravagant and thorough and how deep these court ladies, like how much they had to know about food to be able to serve the king and how food can be medicine but it can also be used to kill people if it is, if like the wrong person is creating the meal and how that if like you use food to kill people or to harm people and how that's like a reflection of like jealousy and greed and thirst for power and like all these things that are just so beautifully intertwined into this show and it's really awesome and i feel like am i is my nose bleeding my nose bleeds a lot these days because it's been getting really dry in new york um and yeah, and also the traditional medicine aspect of it as well, which I think it really, it's traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I really appreciate, I keep saying I appreciate, but I really do appreciate how wholesome and how deep this show is and how much just by watching this, girl who's going through so much adversity but yet she's so strong and she keeps persevering no matter what happens to not like she's not seeking revenge for her parents death but she's she uses that to empower her to keep her strong and to keep her motivated to keep going so that her parents and the people who were close to her didn't die in vain and i just like i don't want to get too much into it because i want to ruin it for you guys but like this girl goes through a lot like she is just 
a series of unfortunate events like it just never like it hasn't ended i'm 35 episodes into it and like you can be like ah oh, you'll have like a like a oh she's like finally okay now but then the next all right so the battery died the lighting totally changed and it got really hot so i changed but the show must go on so we will go on um yeah basically i already said everything i wanted to say traditional culture chinese culture learning self-improvement learning through the development of the character the things that the trials and tribulations that the characters go through and how a lot of what they go through deciding between choosing the light side or choosing the dark side um and a lot of pride being humble being grounded being rooted in goodness and moral principles so that's that's the show and the next movie that i want to talk about is train to busan the lead character is from goblin which is another korean drama i've watched recently but i'm not gonna talk about that because although it was good it wasn't like after watching jewel in the palace like none none of the korean dramas i've watched it like they all are here and then jewel in the palace is like here even w like i love w but like maybe w is like here and everything else is like here anyway <clears throat> the movie is a zombie apocalyptic movie where a father who's this like hedge fund manager i don't know if it's hedge fund he's a he's a fund manager all he does is care about himself and work and works a lot his daughter wants to go to busan to see her mom because they've divorced and as they're on the train to go to busan this crazy zombie outbreak happens and just like people are eating each other they're like really fat zombies and they run and they kill you and they eat you and you turn into a zombie and i was watching it in bed here like right there lying down and when i got up in the middle to take a restroom break i just realized how big my room is because the way the movie was shot where everything was just like in a train like in a compartment of a train and so many things were happening and zombies were like right next to the main characters and like they had to run through trains of zombies to get to the other carts to save other people it created this very claustrophobic feeling i guess that when i finally like lifted my head up to look around me i was like damn I'm so grateful for the space that I have. I'm so grateful that my parents are alive. I'm so grateful that my parents taught me to be a very selfless person, no matter of whatever it is that I'm going through in terms of like, especially when, you know how they say like your true color show when you're really tested or when like something, like when something really tragic happens or when something really crazy happens, the way you react to it and the way you deal with that situation is a true reflection of your own character so the main character of course like in the beginning he's like really selfish he doesn't do anything all he does is like care about himself and his daughter but then as the story goes on and the sun is just disappearing into the cloud but as the story goes on his daughter was the one that was like why are you so selfish because you're so selfish like and you only care about yourself that's why mom left you and so it's like character development character progression you just see you know it's like the goodness in people and the badness in people just how some people are just so selfish and they would do anything in their power to make other people suffer or like they will just put their own lives above other people so that's the second thing i want to talk about the third thing i'll do the i'll do the box i kind of want to unbox it because i haven't really i peeked at what was in here but then i didn't open it yet packaging so good my best friend used to work here and she totally hooked it up with this bag still paid for it though but she gave me some good discounts so open like these like these like these okay so this is the so they're known for their bucket bags the founders of mansur gabriel they were both 
Louis Vuitton veterans, something like that. Basically, they worked at some pretty big names and they decided to make their own bags. And they're very well known for their bucket bags that came out a couple years ago. And it's the, the black bucket bag with the red lining inside, the, the black flama. Flama, flama, flama. So this is the, the colors picking up to be a lot more red. It's actually more maroon, dark reddish. And this is the suede mini mini. And the mini mini is very mini. I just uh, check pants. Always wearing my shark pants. Mini mini. It's like very mini. I love it. I love it. This is actually the first time I took it out of the bag. So I'm really glad with this purchase. I knew I was going to love it anyway. But I'm just happy that it's so beautiful. So the only thing is I'm kind of scared of it getting dirty and the suede rubbing off easily. But okay it is what it is so that is the bag next will be beauty products so what a break okay first thing i want to talk about is this fresh rose deep hydration facial toner this one is alcohol free it is deeply hydrating and there's actual rose petals inside if it will focus come on come on yeah there's real uh flower petals rose petals inside the first time i used it i was so surprised at how smooth and luscious and plump my face felt instantly when I patted it on my face. So the way I apply this, it's you can either use your hands or um, put it on a cotton swab. Cotton swab? Cotton swab. I usually just use my hands because I feel like, I don't know, you tend to waste more products if you put it on a cotton pad. So this just smells divine it smells like a rose garden and i just i love everything about fresh so if you guys are in the market for a toner and you have dry skin or sensitive skin this is really amazing and i think it'll come in really really good use as fall and winters slowly but surely approaching here in the city so yeah this is uh the first one the next bosha black charcoal deep pore exfoliating peel i want to show you guys how this works so what you do is you put some do it in the light put some on your skin i'm just gonna, oh the f man wow this isn't safe now it just looks like I have like black stuff on my sleeve. But um, let me just, just finish this really quick. Ayo! Why is it squirting out like this? Okay, yeah, I should definitely not be doing this on my bed. Noted. So, this, see, instantly I just, I, oh man, it's just, like dripping all over. So I'm like, Going like this, and then it removes dead skin cells on your hands. I was gonna do it on the back of my hands, but I guess this works too. And there's all this stuff on my bed. Hmm, that's what I get for trying to cord on my bed. And this will be forever memorized as the day I try to film on my bed. But anyway, I hope you guys saw that thing on my face. And my hands, so you're supposed to do that to your face, of course. And um, yeah, it's very exfoliating, dead skin off of your face, and it's deep cleansing because there's the charcoal, and charcoal is really powerful. And there's all these amazing things that come with charcoal. And then next, we have this glow recipe watermelon glow sleeping mask. This has been this is amazing you're running through a watermelon feel it actually smells like watermelon jolly ranchers and it makes your skin glow it makes your skin dewy it makes your skin super supple and juicy and it is a mask that can be used every single day but i use it mostly like at least once or twice a week and you're supposed to leave it on overnight and wash it off in the morning. I've read a lot of reviews on this and a lot of people are saying how this is very comparable to a lot of the designer, not designer, like luxury, high-end brand skincare products, but 
for the price point it is really great compared to other things on the market and i think it's like 40 something dollars and the last thing i want to talk about is this jojoba oil from trader joe's i'm pretty sure like an organic version or a more like it'll probably be better for your skin but this i've used it in the past my mom's had it so i just like this doesn't matter it's just oil on my skin i guess but okay it's used for removing makeup which i have used for my eye makeup and it's really hard to take off but this works if you have some patience it helps cleanse clogged pores soften skin and moisturizes so recently i changed my skincare routine i added the toner to my skincare routine i usually just put on essence and i added this as well as the, uh, yeah, 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 the last step um to my routine and my skin if i eat properly <clears throat> along with using these products my skin is flawless but if I don't eat properly and I don't sleep enough and I don't sleep on time and I don't wake up enough to meditate and do qigong practice which I have been slacking off a lot then like my skin right now like it's okay it could be better yeah so what I was trying to say was these two things have really I can see a visible difference in the texture of my skin the complexion the bouncy and juiciness and glowiness of my skin so yeah this is a pretty fail video it's not a fail video it's just I haven't filmed in a long time and I also just squirted this black stuff all over my bed and myself because I didn't know it's gonna come out that way so I hope you guys enjoyed this I really do let me know what you guys think let me know if you guys have any requests for videos that you want to see um, if there's specific things that you guys want me to talk about if you have any questions that you want me to answer I'm trying to pop this that's why my face Oh, that was so anticlimactic. Ah, oh, really? That wasn't fun at all. So, yeah, let me know if you guys have any suggestions on videos, any questions. Maybe I can do a Q and A, whatever. Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next week. Okay, goodbye. I'm gonna clean and wash my sheets and wash my clothes. Bye!